Hey everyone, Pugs here with two new reviews for y'all. Today I'm covering Krabby Land and the camping episode. Well then, these are two episodes with wildly different receptions. By the general populace, I mean, not myself, because I think I might have some unpopular opinions on this one. At least hear me out before you pick up the pitchforks, okay? I swear my opinions are not as wild as I'm making them sound. As always, gotta extend a quick thank you to everyone who's watching today, and with that said and done, let's just get right into it. Krabby Land is an episode that I always think of as being in season 4. Like, seriously. Without fail, I'll be like, this is a season 4 episode. It's just got those vibes. Something about late season 3 Spongebob has season 4 vibes. Which I suppose makes sense. And me saying that an episode has season 4 vibes says nothing about the quality of the thing, because I'm sure by now it's obvious that I'm not one of those season 1 through 3 dick riders. Or, well, I actually just dick ride the entire show. <laughs> I think that's more accurate to my constant positivity. Well, anyway, I'm getting besides myself here. Let's get started on talking about the episode. Let me make something clear real quick. I always like Spongebob, like the character. But in this episode, I really, really like him. Because in this episode, it's like he's got all of, or almost all of my favorite traits of his, like on full display. And this is obvious from the very beginning, where he's so happy and full of joy about it being the first day of summer, and he's got that adorable little flower costume on. The moment of him throwing the flower petals on a very unenthused Squidward is as cute as it is hilarious, and I love every second of it. I love that both he and Mr. Krabs share a love of summer, even if it's for very, very different reasons. We also get my crumbs of Mr. Krabs being a father figure towards Spongebob in this episode, so that's a win in my books. Speaking of Mr. Krabs, this episode marks one of his more asshole appearances. He only sees children as the profit they bring him, to the point of creating a trashy, dangerous playground just to draw them in. Not to mention his lack of care towards Spongebob later in the episode. Money is the only thing on his mind in Krabby Land, but thankfully he gets his comeuppance, as we'll see, so I think it's okay. Mr. Krabs' assholeness is also played for laughs throughout the episode, so it never feels quite so egregious. Really, I think this entire episode is a pointed message about something. I mean, did you hear Mr. Krabs' little monologue? Krabby Land also has some really underrated humor in my opinion, but maybe it's just underrated because this episode as a whole is underrated. Or maybe overhated. Those are kind of, but also not the same thing. I, I love the whole bit with Spongebob and Mr. Krabs scoping out the playground and Spongebob's like, the way you drove the boat while driving on the ground was kind of cool. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's Almost like it deconstructs the way they entered the scene, but also certain cartoon aesthetics in general. I know I love being on my over-explaining joke shit, but even I can't manage to over-explain this one. It just works. Also, the way Mr. Krabs just leaves Spongebob in the dust in this scene is really funny. I also love that Spongebob lampshades certain writing processes, aka time skips in episodes when he's like, gee, I wonder what Mr. Krabs has been up to since I saw him last and went home to do nothing of particular interest to this very moment. You guys know I love the witty and wordy humor, and this episode, or at least this part of it, is full of that. But I don't know, I think there's other moments like this, such as the coloring book slash liability waivers bit. I've already kind of started talking about this point, but whenever I watch this episode, I always feel bad for Spongebob. The poor guy is forced by Mr. Krabs to take the brunt of the kids in patience for seeing Krabby the Clown, and man, does Spongebob go through it with these kids. I've gotta ask, where are the parents? Honestly, just letting their kiddos run amok all over this dangerous-ass playground. But anyway, even though I hate seeing Spongebob get treated like this, I do like how he never gets mad at the kids or anything. He's just too pure for that. And honestly, I'm hard-pressed to blame these kids for enjoying Spongebob's pain. For the most part, they aren't even causing it either. It's all just Spongebob hurting himself for their entertainment. And besides, they're just kids. This is a tangent by this point, but as I've gotten older, I'm less and less inclined to dislike child characters. It feels weird to judge them so harshly as an adult. But that's just me. Anyway, back to the episode. I have to admit some of the quote-unquote torture Spongebob goes through is a bit funny. Like the lima bean bit. And of course, Tom Kenny's voice acting just makes everything better. I also love that the kids end up using Spongebob's limbs as boomerangs. Too funny. And even though the kids were kinda maybe little jerks to Spongebob, no matter where you stand, or at least hopefully no matter where you, how you feel about the kids, you can't help but feel bad for them when Mr. Krabs pulls the ultimate bait and switch with his woefully disappointing act as Krabby the Clown. This bit is so fresh, er, so freaking funny, uh, particularly when we see the dumbstruck look on Spongebob and the kids' faces. And then I love, love, love how Spongebob immediately goes to stick up for the kids and shames Mr. Krabs for the bullshit he just pulled, masterfully calling back to the beginning of the episode as well. 
This is exactly the kind of shit I like to see. The ending of this episode is also great, with Mr. Krabs getting more of what he deserves, and then the children's viciousness going to a much more deserving target. I also love how in this episode, Spongebob almost goes through a whole character arc, starting off being young and in love with the idea of summer, then becoming disillusioned by the greed of Mr. Krabs, to then rediscovering meaning and believing in the magic of summer again. Yes, I'm saying all this and making the episode more dramatic than it is, but am I wrong though? And it makes the episode more wholesome to me to look at it this way. And of course we get the ending bit with yet another callback, this time to the earlier lima bean joke. Just a very solid ending to a very solid episode. I'm torn as to whether I'm shocked that Krabby Land is an ill-received episode or not. On one hand, I really like this episode and have no real problems with it, so it's like, what? People don't like this? Mr. Krabs is especially horrible here, yes, but he gets what he deserves and it's never too egregious for me, probably because it doesn't really have that much screen time and it's also just funny. On the other hand, this episode does parallel some of the later episodes of the show that are commonly described as being pretty bad. I could easily see someone arguing that Mr. Krabs is, uh, flanderized here, which is a term I've come to loathe because of how it has rotted the brains of cartoon reviewers, but let me not open up that can of worms today. So, no matter what other people think about it, I really like Krabby Land. It's a very enjoyable to me, or it's a very enjoyable episode to me, and it belongs in my great tier, where it comes in with a score of 8.7 out of 10. For the second review of today, we've got the camping episode, which is probably one of the most well-known SpongeBob SquarePants episodes of all time. Though, actually, I have certain thoughts about that too. Like, I think this episode is more subtly known than one like Band Geeks, but I might be wrong about that. Anyway, none of that matters. I just want to say one more thing though, which is that the title of this episode stands out to me, because I would not say that a camping episode is a common trope in TV shows, like this title implies. A beach episode? Sure, but not a camping one. So the title of this episode is just more amusing to me because of that. The camping episode has got some top-notch vibes. First off, this episode takes place entirely at night, so like Plankton, it's a very atmospheric episode in that way. Visually, perhaps not as much as one like Nasty Patty or Scaredy Pants, but the camping vibes are still there in the backgrounds and the lighting. And the fact that this episode is about camping also gives it another helping of vibes, especially when the campfire is going. It's funny that this episode is about camping, considering I abhor camping. Or, well, that's a very strong word. I just don't like camping for many reasons. <laughs> The whole plot of Spongebob and Patrick camping outside in Spongebob's lawn is funny to me. It almost feels like the kind of thing you'd get up to as a kid. Not that I've ever camped outside my house when I was a kid, but y'all know what I mean. Maybe. And honestly, if I was living in a house with a nice enough yard to do this kind of thing in, I could see myself doing this on a warm summer night. Though I do hate bugs. Anyway, this episode is much like Idiot Box when it comes to the wholesome childish joy exuded by Spongebob and Patrick, and I love to see it. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this episode has quite a few similarities to Idiot Box and Snowball Effect, with Spongebob and Patrick unintentionally, or perhaps intentionally, egging Squidward on and making him, making him feel the need to prove himself to them for whatever reason. Which then, of course, makes him stoop down, or, well, stoop down in his opinion, to their childish level. I suppose that this is just a common dynamic between these three characters, perhaps one of the defining characteristics of their dynamic, and it's one that works well. So, no reason to get mad about similar episode structures. Not that I would have gotten mad. The camping episode starts getting really funny once Squidward decides to join Spongebob and Patrick in camping. Watching Squidward, who gives off the vibes of someone who hates nature, trying to be a real outdoorsman, is hilarious. And I love how seriously Spongebob and Patrick take him in his attempts, writing down notes and everything. The tent part is really funny, and probably my favorite part of this scene. And once the marshmallows come out, Spongebob and Patrick acting like astronauts is really cute as well. And then the whole part with Squidward and the marshmallows is just a classic joke as well. It's a great example of how you do the rule of three without being repetitive or dull. And of course, I cannot start talking about the campfire episode without discussing the ever iconic campfire song song. Not only is this song just a good tune on its own, but it's also a great addition to the episode because of how it incorporates humor and jokes into it, like with the Patrick and Squidward bits. It makes it fit right into the episode and not feel like tone whiplash. It also makes the song fun to listen to outside of the context of the episode, since it kind of feels like you're just listening to an audio recording of the episode. This is a side note, but it's kind of like how the recording of Stadium Rave on the SpongeBob Greatest Hit, SpongeBob's Greatest His Hits album has the sound of SpongeBob walking at the very beginning of it. Yeah, I just remember that from all those years that I've listened to that album. But anyway, 
From the campfire song song, we move right into another area of iconicism, which is the sea bear scene. These last few minutes are probably the highlight of the campfire episode, or camp song, wait, the camp, camping episode. Oh my god, my script is literally wrong. Anyway, uh, they're probably the highlight of the camping episode, at least if I had to choose one. The magazine co cover, Spongebob recounting a story you heard from a guy ad nauseum, Spongebob roasting Squidward casually, um, and Squidward deciding he's going to try and lure a sea bear are all excellent moments. And in the moment the sea bear finally shows up, this is hilarious as well. You'd think that seeing, or really mostly hearing, Squidward get beat up multiple times would get old fast, but it doesn't. It's hilarious with every single iteration. Also, it makes me wonder why certain factions of the fandom don't call this, uh, Squidward torture porn, but let me not. <laughs> I like how at the end of the episode, the sea bear had some legitimate beef with Squidward, and of course, that's not the only animal Squidward pissed off that night, because we've got the ending stinger with the sea rhinoceros. R.I.P. Squidward. Even though the camping episode is a good episode, I don't have very much to talk about. It's a clever and witty episode, although not all of its jokes hit hard for me. And that's why I'm not going to stall anymore and just say that my potentially shocking opinion that this episode is not in my amazing tier. Allow me to explain. Well, actually, I don't really have that much to say. I liked the episode, but it didn't have that wow factor. I think the beginning might have been just a bit too understated for me, but I don't know. It's also very much possible that I was too harsh on this episode when reviewing it originally last year. Um, oh well. I don't consider the camping episode to be overrated like, say, band geeks, though even if it is a popular episode. But all of this is besides the main point I'm making here, which is that the camping episode is being placed in my great tier, where it comes in with a score of 8.5 out of 10. As always, gonna end this review with some closing thoughts in line. I guess one thing I can talk about is expanding upon my quick little comment about being surprised that certain parts of the fandom don't regard the camping episode as a Squidward torture porn. I was joking. Kind of. I mean, first off, those parts of this fandom would never think to denigrate a pre-movie episode that wasn't dumped on with stupid party pooper pants or the sponge you could fly. So that's one of the reasons I was being facetious. The second is because I know exactly why, you know, other than the style of the blindness and the flimsiness of the Squidward torture porn concept, that this episode is not called that because Squidward very much brought this upon himself considering he was given multiple warnings about not attracting a wild animal. And also, because the actor against Squidward was a wild animal, it's harder to assign blame to it. I'm sure no one actually needed me to go into detail about this side comment of mine, but I felt like it. One other thing I wanted to mention real quick is that I actually don't know if Krabby Land generally has a positive or negative reception. I feel like I've seen people speak negatively on it, but I could definitely be blowing things out of proportion. I just feel like it's an episode that people would be speaking negatively on, you know what I mean? Especially because of how Mr. Krabs was acting. Actually, because of how Mr. Krabs was acting, considering I literally cannot see any other reason why people would systematically complain about this episode, as in beyond just personal preferences. But maybe I'm not very good at, at assuming other perspectives. Who knows? Alright, that's a lot of stuff I just said, so I think that's my cue to leave. That means I'm going to cut myself off now, and I'll see y'all in the next review.